My name is David Rocky. I'm a developer at Thomas Street, which is a software firm on Capitol Hill. And we've been using AngularJS for about six months. We've used it on two medium-sized client projects, one of which we're working on right now. And that client has been nice enough to let us show you guys some code samples today. So we're going to show some samples from our app that we're working on that shows how to read data from a server, display it, interact with it, and post it back with Angular. So our client is called Othello. They're building a group voting platform that lets you select advisors from among your Facebook friends or political parties, the Vancouver BC to the Canadian parties. And then once you've done that, you can vote on policy options. So you select your advisors here, and then your advisor's opinions show up along the slider. So the reason I picked this is it's one bit of data, your list of advisors, that's showing up in two places. And Angular really shines there. So our first step is reading data from the server. Uh, a little bit of architecture. Alan was talking about, or showed you an example of a Angular controller. A controller is an object that's bound to a chunk of the DOM. It's going to hold all the data and all the any functions that that bit of view code needs. We're going to have two controllers for this example. We're going to have the select advisors controller and the select advisors view and the voting controller and the voting view. Both of those are going to have a dependency on an advisor service. So an Angular service is any object you want to provide to your controllers that provides useful shared, func shared functions, shared data. Uh, in Alan's example, he used the provided HTTP service, which is obviously useful to lots of different places in the app, so you want to pull it in. We're going to write our own service to share data between the controllers. And to pull the data, at startup from a Rails API, a bunch of JSON. So we're going to have an Angular module, which is called Othello, which is a client name. All of our controllers and services we build are going to go in there. Our service is called Advisors, and we are providing a factory function that asks for the dollar sign resource service, which is a built-in Angular service. This uses Angular's uh, dependency injection framework, where the name of your parameter in your factory function tells Angular what to insert there. So it sees that this parameter is called dollar sign resource, and it's going to hand this function the dollar sign resource uh, object when it runs to create our service. So when we create our service, we're going to call dollar sign resource on a URL. We're going to then get that. So what dollar sign resource does is it wraps a URL and turns it into an API endpoint that you can interact with. Once we get this resource, we can do things like post to it, post data to it, we can send a delete request to it, and we can get data from it. That's what we did in the service. So the way get works is pretty cool. If we assign something to the result calling get, immediately we get an empty object that we can hand off to whatever controllers we want or do whatever we want with. A couple seconds later, when the response finishes, it'll be filled out with the data we, we're getting back from the server. So that means we can hand that empty object to a Angular view. It'll try to draw it, probably can't really draw anything. But then a couple seconds later, that data will appear, and that information will automatically propagate to the view. So you don't have to wire back a callback on this get request. Angular will see that your backend model has changed, that your data has changed, and they'll update your view, which makes displaying it really easy. We're going to use an ng repeat like Alan did. We're going to iterate over this list. We're going to create some HTML. We're going to just print the advisor's name. So before the HTTP response, that produces no HTML. Because advisors.list, which we're assuming there's going to be a list field defined eventually, advisors.list is undefined. There's nothing to iterate over. Angular does nothing. It gives us no HTML, which is what we want. We don't have any data yet. A second later, our response finishes, and we have a bunch of data. That data is used to fill out, or right, we then iterate over that data, creating a list item for each advisor. And Angular is going to update the view automatically when this data is available. If we have the two places in our app, in our, uh, in our template, both are going to update at the same time. Here we have a list of list items and a list of divs, one being the selection, one being those dots you saw at the beginning. Both of those are going to update automatically with no extra work on our part. So to interact with it, we're going to add an ng-click handler, uh, which is going to fire a 
where it's going to evaluate this JavaScript whenever we click on one of these items. What it's going to do is call toggle advisor, passing in our advisor. Toggle advisor is a method defined on our scope, which will be right here. This is our controller scope. It's, what's, it's what controls the view code that's associated with. We've defined toggle advisor, or flipping the value, right, on the passed in object. And one thing to note here is that this passed in object is actually a reference to an object inside that advisor service we initially created. That's because when we iterate over it, we pass in an advisor to this chunk of HTML, we bind to that HTML. Then when we call it ng-click, that's it. Oops. That same reference is passed in to our function. So we <coughs> mutate this advisor object. That's mutating an object inside the advisor service. That means anything else that's looking at this advisor service is going to update instantly, because Angular is going to detect that change when we do this. So the fact that we're mutating in the service is going to make posting back really easy in this case, because that resource we created earlier has a save method that just posts its current state back to its URL that we gave at the beginning. So we mutate it, and then we save that service. And the service posts itself back to our API. We could throw in a success handler if we wanted to, but we're being really trusting here. So this is just a small part of the app that I ran through pretty fast. But I hope this makes it a little bit more concrete how you do some basic JavaScript app stuff in Angular. Next.